Thank you all for being here. I'm Anna Lee. I'm the creative director at ArtSpace, and I have been looking forward to this evening for quite a while. Um, we are gathered here today to discuss uh, collecting art, to discuss the process of curating, and to do it um, with the, the backdrop of this incredible exhibition celebrating North Carolina artists, which is our fresh fundraising show that's currently up at ArtSpace. And this exhibition is one that's, um, it means quite a lot to me. It's one of the first shows I uh, did at ArtSpace when I came on as uh, seven years ago. And it is a biennial uh, fundraiser, as I'd mentioned. And the idea of it is to really, initially the idea for it was to demystify the traditional juried exhibition. So um, in which an artist will typically submit a digital image um, and those images are reviewed through a computer screen by a juror and the um, selections are made and then those selections are hung and people see the, the work and, and what's always sort of um, been frustrating to me both as a, a juror and on the other side of that has been that you miss out on all those other um, really cool connections and possibilities that that could have been um, because as we we all know there a great deal of um, looking at art and, and working with art and curating art is subjective. We all come to the world with our own biases and our own histories and experiences and um, our own emotions and moods and all of those things can uh, affect um, decisions that we make. And so um, for us with Fresh, taking advantage of the fact that we, through this exhibition, hang in our gallery spaces, every work of art that is submitted to us from across the state. And this year we received over 250 submissions from mountains to coast. Um, we really wanted to take advantage of that and invite in multiple uh, perspectives to look at that work and, um, and make their choices. And I will say, I, I tasked these curators who I will introduce in, in just a moment with a really difficult um, challenge, which is I really gave them no parameters whatsoever outside of, I want you to select between 30 and 40 works from this massive pool of 250 artists. Um, and then we're going to talk about it. So I, I want to make sure that the audience understands that, that this was very open-ended and that was very intentional on my part because I, I really want, um, I want to get into those, those spaces of, um, the, the many possibilities, um, that, that you can approach it with. And you will see that some of our jurors did approach this pool of work from um, a kind of a conceptual uh, point of view with a theme in mind. Some of our curators approached it just purely on what uh, spoke to them, the work that they liked, um, and and you'll you'll get more of that once we we get into it. Just to give you a little bit of the format of the evening, I will give a very quick introduction to each of the jur the curators uh, to let our audience know why why this group of people is is here tonight. Why why Dustin Patrick Smith and Tiff Merritt, Marjorie Hodges, and and Carly Jones, um, and then they'll they'll have an opportunity to to add to that. And then I've asked each each of them to sum up the experience of paring down this this big body of work into those 30 to 40 pieces um, in, in a single word. And then once we've done that, I will um, share my screen with all of you. So I am going to um, rely on our audience this evening to please use the chat if, if you have any difficulties seeing um, my screen as I've shared it. I'm not the most tech savvy person, so um, I want to make sure we do this right and everyone sees everything. We'll take a look at each of the the curator's selections um, and then take the conversation from there. So um, without further ado, 
I will start with our, I'm, I think I'll always introduce her as such for at least the next few years, our new president and CEO at Artspace, Carly Jones, who I invited um, because of that, because she is our, our new leader. I wanted her to have an opportunity to really get into the process. But also, uh, Carly, I wanted you involved in this specifically because you come from a performance background. Visual art is something that you've had the, the opportunity to work with um, through your work at the North Carolina Arts Council for the, the last four years um, before starting at, at ArtSpace. Um, but really you, you come at this as a, as a performer and I really wanted that, um, that perspective. Um, also, I think you come at this as a, um, an advocate. You're a, a involved, you are, um, you've been very integral in organizing the Women's March in, in Raleigh amongst many other um, social causes. You've really um, put community and outreach at the forefront of the work we're doing at ArtSpace. And um, so welcome this evening. Thank you, Anna. That was very a very nice intro. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm excited um, to be to do this. I haven't ever curated a visual arts uh, virtual <laughs> exhibition uh, or or anything like that. So I'm I'm really excited to um, to do this for the first time. And um, thank you, everyone, for being here with us this evening um, for for this. Uh, really interesting talk and all of the different perspectives that we're going to have on the, um, in the conversation today. So I'm, yeah, I'm excited to dive in. It was fun. Good. So is that yes. your word, Carly? What's your, your one word? Oh, my word. Say? Oh That's no. Perfect. Yeah. So my word, um, I would say eye opening. My word is eye opening. Awesome. Um, yeah, it was, there were 250 plus pieces on the walls. And I had the privilege of seeing all of these pieces in person every day when I come into work, which is great. Um, uh, and yeah, I think that um, similar to music, kind of sitting with art and taking it in is um, a lost art in itself. So, you know, we, in music, we call that deep listening, like a deep listening session where you, you put on a record and you close your eyes and you listen and you just, you're still and you listen to it. And I felt like I walked through the exhibition the first time and I saw different things than the second time, the, th the third time. And then when I was really, you know, having to get my selections into you, I said, okay, let me just really take time away from email, take time away from my phone. Let me, let me sit in front of these pieces for some time and soak it in. And um, so during that time, you know, I, as I looked um, at the piece, at each of the pieces and just took them in and take, took the time to really um, gaze at them and study them. Um, it was very eye opening. You know, um, and I think it takes time sometimes with art to see different um, perspectives and to see different details that you may not have seen before. Yeah. So I would say eye opening. Eye opening. Awesome. Yeah. And that is good because that's a privilege not all of these curators had. I, and I, I'm not <laughs> sure that everyone was able to see the work in person, which is interesting. We'll get there. Um, so thank you, Carly. Sure. Next, I will introduce Tift, who is another artist who represents a um, the mu musical side of things, a performance artist. But Tift, I had the um, pleasure of seeing your work at the, um, oh gosh, now I'm forgetting the name of the festival at Dick's Park. Was it Seek? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I, I did an oh, installation there. You know, and that, that opened my eyes because I realized Tift is a, a phenomenal musician, but fundamentally a storyteller. And I realized, too, one, one who um, is willing to sort of work um, through different different media and and ideas to to share stories and throw so I was very excited to invite you to be a part of this for those reasons Fine. thank you um, 
and and also as a nod to our fresh sound series which is going on so we expanded our our um what had been a purely visual arts experience in the past to include uh performances by uh north carolina artists and so i wanted i wanted that represented here tonight as well so. well thank you for for thinking of musicians and um i mean i think if i had my druthers i would be a visual artist but i've never been able to make my my thoughts clear and that way you know it doesn't come out at all like I hoped or pictured it's a total failure so I'm not a painter um but I you know I think about um curation I mean I, that sounds like a really I don't know that I'm allowed to use that what I do or have done but um as a as a writer you know I I focus a lot on editing and then the storytelling sequencing um, is really, you know, whether it's an album and this, the song sequence is going to walk you through a story or, or maybe it's not a linear narrative and you're going to reverse the order of things and have juxtapositions that throw things akimbo and, and make, make new paths. So um, I didn't, I, I had a hard time thinking about one word, um, so I chose two, editing and sequencing. Um, and, and I think, you know, whenever you choose one word, it, 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 it ends up being like, the word is layer. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> I think it's really um, granular what, what ties things together. Um, what ties what ties people together? What ties feelings together? So um, you know, while while we're going really wide with these large um, ideas about curation, just I think there is something very granular about the decisions that isn't always easy to put into words. And I just lastly will add that I really um, know just enough about art to be a fan and um, not enough to always understand what's happening. And so when I go to museums, I'm often, I like to go um, to just shows of one artist where I can kind of see the um, dynamic of their work and their process over a lifetime at, because I can understand that and relate to it. And I, and I often am like, why did the curator put that next to that? I don't understand. And, and that can, you know, that can be um, frustrating for me because I don't always, I want to understand the personal context of what I'm looking at. Thank you, Tift. All right, Dustin Patrick Smith, you are Hi. next. And I invited you to be a part of this because you are have become a dear friend, but um, someone whose collection, um, whose personal art collection, I admire a lot because um, I think you and I um, have some similarities in the way we think about the art we want to live with. And um, I don't think that that fits the typical mold necessarily. I think we're willing to live with some things that, that might be a little um, strange or odd or uncomfortable. And yeah. um, that's something that I um, really enjoy. And, and I, I thought it would be fun to have your perspective, but also, um, you're someone who really, I think, integrates art more so than that in their collection. It's about um, your life. You're a, a, a creative, you are a salon owner, and, and you know, art was a part of that whole um, experience of entering that space. Um, you mentioned earlier before we invited all of our guests in that you're starting this farm project. And, and again, I think for you're the type of person who's thinking about the way that that art is going to um, be a part of these big projects very early on, which isn't yeah. always how it happens. So often we see projects started and particularly spatial projects where art is sort of the last thing. It's gilding the <laughs> lily. And so I, yeah. I, I'm really excited to have you here tonight and, and hear your perspective on on things. 
Well, I'm incredibly honored. This has been so fun for me. And I really appreciate that introduction. I, It is true. So art has always been incredibly powerful and inspiring to me. Um, and I actually, a lot of times the way that I go about my life, I, I lead with that. And it's funny because even when I built my house, I remember you know, I planned on having this big fireplace and then I came across this gi ginormous piece from Sean Richards and I had to do a, like a change order on my house because I was like, okay, I need a place for this piece of art because I've never been someone that finds an art that's going to look great with a sofa. That's just not who I am. You know, I have always acquired art uh, that has inspired me, has touched me, that's been thought provoking that makes me feel uncomfortable, something that keeps me coming back uh, for conversation. And, you know, that's how I've always lived my life. It's actually quite embarrassing because, you know, I do have a lot of art. Um, I actually have a closet filled with art because I don't ever stop um, finding things that I love and, and know that at a time I will, I will have a place to sh show that piece or, I'll, or I kind of change things throughout my house. But yeah, and you're right. And as I'm, you know, like Anna was saying, I'm undergoing this huge project of developing a farm right now. And this will be a place for the community. And, you know, my, in the very beginning, I've always said, I, we want some type of artist residency because I want art to be integrated into this atmosphere and create that type of community within this beautiful natural space. So um, yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful. I do have somewhat of an art background. You know, I was a fine arts major in college and then I ended up working in the fashion industry. Um, so I had a slight turn, uh, been a makeup artist, a hairstylist uh, for a very long time. And that's now shifted into uh, me doing more lifestyle uh, stuff. I have a YouTube and I do a lot of things on social media now. And, but no matter what I do, I always try to create, create, I'm, I'm always creating. And that's why I'm probably most excited about doing this farm is because it's just a, it's a playground for me to, to completely lose myself and create, invite other creators to help dream with me. But I think through this process that I had the honor to, to be a curator, which, you know, I think is, is, is a play on the word of fresh, which is refreshing. And it's refreshing to have new insight. I think that's how art should be. It should not always just be this, you know, this one group of people that are experts. It should be for a wider audience to, to be able to have perspective and give opinions and, um, you know, make people think about things that might, that, you know, might not necessarily be a part of the grain of the art community. And, um, and also it's incredibly refreshing just to see so many different artists that are able to come together. You have seasoned artists with people that have never shown pieces, you know, before in a gallery. And to me, that's, that's amazing. And that's how, that's how, you know, doors are opened. And so to me, this whole experience is, is refreshing, so. Awesome, thank you. And last but certainly not least is Marjorie Hodges, who, oh man, Mar Marjorie, you have been involved in the the contemporary art scene um, in in Raleigh for so long, as long as I have, I'm sure longer. And it's um, we're really honored to have you here this evening, Marjorie. I first met when she was working at Flanders Art Gallery in downtown, which was a, a fantastic space for those of you who remember it. Um, she then became really integral to the work happening at the North Carolina Museum of Art and now has partnered with Alan Thomas Jr., an incredible um, collector in based in Wilson, North Carolina to create Art Suite, which places artwork all across the area um, by mostly um, local artists and um, has really done an amazing job to support the arts community through that work. And so Marjorie, I invited you here because of those rich experiences, because um, I have a great deal of respect for your eye and, um, and I'm, I'm delighted to have you here this evening. 
Well, thank you so much, Anna, and thank you all. Um, this is a panel of friends, so that even makes it um, more fun. But yes, I had the chance to work with Kelly McChesney at Flanders and then was director of the foundation at CAM. So another step in oh there gosh. and then the Museum of Art. Um, but you know, I've always been passionate about art. I, I am not an artist myself. Um, I am a trained classical pianist, but quickly um, moved into um, visual arts, marketing and promotions and um, started Art Suite, it's interesting, not to be a, a gallery to represent artists, but to provide um, a new model, a new platform for advocating for artists and also sharing the stories of collectors. So that's why I was so excited to participate in this because I really want people, I want to encourage people to collect art um, at whatever level and at whatever their taste, because I have learned in this last two years, especially um, that every collect, I've worked with so many major collectors and they all have different tastes. So collecting art is so subjective. So I just, I kind of want to empower people um, through Art Suite and, and through these types of interviews to, to make, you know, make their own choices. Um, with this exhibition, I intended to come in. Um, I came in with my notebook to spend several hours and I was going to to choose a theme and try to be as academic as possible. And I just saw the big fresh sign on the wall, new perspectives. And I said, wait a minute, I don't, maybe I shouldn't do that. You know, maybe I should just really um, use a curator's eye in a different way. So what I did do is focus on, you know, technical expertise and the um, special processes and, um, and conceptualism and also art that was speaking to the issues of our time. So in that way, I was, in other words, not just looking for aesthetic value, but you know what was beyond that. But I decided not to have a theme. I decided not to have a title. Um, and the word, you ask us to, to come up with the word, and mine is um, open-mindedness. Mm. And, and I I say that because you would think at 20 years of in these museums and um, roles that I would become more sure about what great art is. And instead, you know, I'm led in so many different directions because, you know, just when I've kind of figured out my taste um, and, and what I'm really, this is profound, and there are many in this show, I now say, wait a minute. I mean, this artist has told a story in a whole new way, or this artist has created a whole unique process all of their own. So open-minded is my um, theme for this curatorial experience. And again, I'm really happy and thrilled to be here. Wonderful. Thank you all. I'm, this is going to be good. And I'm starting, I'm not going to do it. I'm starting to be like, gosh, do we want to go through each site? We do, but I'm going to keep it very brief because I also don't want to go over time. So I am going to share my screen and just very quickly go through, I think just on that note, Marjorie, where you left us, I'm going to start with you, Carly, um, because one, your your word was very similar, um, eye-opening and open-minded, right? And um, but different. But also, I think because of what uh, Marjorie mentioned, and that she was sort of surprised herself in not sticking to a theme. Um, I want to start with you because you really did have a theme. I think of all of our, our curators here this evening, um, you may have been the only one to, to have a very clearly stated, oh dear Lord, is my desktop <laughs> showing my greatest. All right. Favorite. Oh gosh. Okay. There we go. Okay. Excuse me. Um, so you did have a theme. Oops, I've got it on the wrong one. But that is a piece we will come back to, Samantha Everett's, because she did make it into an, a number of your, your choices. And so, Carly, I'm just going to read what you said um, rather than putting you on the spot. But you said, <laughs> I chose pieces that show us different lenses of the world, intimate moments of life, different ways of viewing what is around us. And so I'm just going to quickly scroll through. Are, are um, participants all able to see this? 
as I'm sharing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Super. Yeah. Maybe it's the, the theater in me <laughs> that I chose a theme. Um, but yes, I, um, I am, I love stories. Um, I have watched through the world as a woman of color um, in the South from a biracial background. Um, and I, so I have always been an other, you know, I think throughout my entire life. So whenever I see art um, <clears throat> that shows a different lens of how we see the world, I think I'm just drawn to it. Um, and, or, and, and that can go quite literally for, you know, you'll see many different artists of color in this, many different um, artists that are from different backgrounds um, that are speaking with their work, right? Speaking, you know, Nina Simone has this quote that an artist's duty is to reflect the times. And I, I love that quote. That's a lot of pressure for an artist, <laughs> but I do love that quote personally for myself. Um, and so I'm really drawn to people. I'm really drawn to the female form as well as a woman. I think um, whenever I see women depicted with strength and beauty, um, I'm drawn to it. Um, and then I also have some abstract pieces in here as well. Yeah. So um, I'm drawn to those because lens, you know, different lenses of the world could also, you know, as I was stating earlier, as I looked at these pieces, I saw different different things, right? And it drew me in. And so there are some more abstract pieces in here um, as well, not quite as literal, you know, as, as perspectives, but, um, you know, the more and more you look at some of these more abstract pieces or some of these beautiful fiber pieces, you know, I just keep kept seeing more and more detail and more and more, I just got lost in them. And so for me, I feel like visual artists, much like performing artists, you know, when I create my work is a vessel, right? Like it's, it's, it's when I sing, when I perform, um, that's my perspective of the world, right? Around me or my perspective of what's going on internally, right? And so I don't know, I just, um, it's a kind of a broad theme. <laughs> Yeah. But you'll see, yeah, like Greta, Greta Boney, who is, um, makes a lot of, creates a lot of work uh, about their experience as a trans person here in the South. Mm -hmm. um, or, um, yes, many different pieces here. Oh, Michelle yeah, Davis, yeah. Lentz, yeah. I'm sure you might have some particular ones, but yeah. Yeah, and I'm not going to pick out a particular piece, but something I'm curious about that you know, in your introduction that, that occurred to me was you were talking about, um, the, the, I, uh, you were talking about slow listening and yeah. that you've had the opportunity to really live with this work. But I think in addition to that, you're also in art space in this community of artists and have gotten to know a lot of these artists on an intimate level. And I'm just curious, how much that with your, how important is that to you and your own impulse to either select works for this, this particular body that, that you've curated or for your own collection? Has that become an important part for you? Like that opportunity to really learn the story about the work through those relationships and that sort of that information as opposed, opposed to it just being a blind, you know, just confronting the work quickly. Oh yeah, absolutely. That. Some of these pieces I know more about because I know the artist that created it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think we just passed Alia's piece um, called yeah. Dissonance. You know, at first I would not have, you know, I 
she told me the story of this young man that she painted and he's was fighting against the very people of his heritage. Um, and that is the meaning of the title. He has his Marines t-shirt on. Um, I thought that was just so intriguing. And I would not have known that had I not talked to Alia. I did find it intriguing already. It's um, painted like on a copper background. And I thought his, um, he's had such an intense expression. Um, but knowing that story made it even more so um, intriguing to me. You know, um, this painting here, Jalen Jackson, he just graduated from a &T. And he made a whole series dedicated to single mothers. And this is a young woman who he graduated with. Um, and so I just thought it was beautiful. And knowing that about him and knowing what this series was about definitely pulled me in even further. So yes, I definitely think um, knowing the artist, um, it definitely influences it, it influences my choices um because it adds to the story you know um i think ivana's piece is in here i wouldn't normally think of um you know a, a, a sculpture out of wax and brick <laughs> but knowing uh her and knowing her story as a serbian american woman and her take on you know, femininity and vulnerability, yet also strength in this piece. Um, you know, I, I I thought it was interesting already because I'd never seen a sculpture made of wax. <laughs> but then hearing her talk about it, um, the strength of women and the strength of people and the strength of her people, and then also the vulnerability that we all have as humans, and then knowing that this piece is made of wax and brick, I it just super, it was very intriguing. And again, another very interesting perspective. Yeah. Lens. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. All right. So I want to move on. I'm trying to think. So I know Tiff. Did you, I don't think you had an opportunity to come to the gallery, did you? Or okay, and you're muted. Tiff, can you unmute? I don't yeah. know how to. Uh, I, I unmuted. Oh, Sorry. Okay. I, 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 I muted because there's some daughter things going on in the background. That's but I didn't so have a. Most, mostly parents here. <laughs> gee, well, thank you for understanding. Um, I didn't have a chance to come in because my daughter and I have both just had COVID sequentially, not together. So um, we, we have we have been in quarantine and, you know, I was just thinking about everything that Carly was saying. And, um, I, you know, I think for me, I really just gravitate to what I like mm -hmm. and, and what often resonates with me is something where I, I trust the storyteller and the, um, the details, even when I don't fully understand or rationally understand everything about um, the craft and the layers. And I, and I think that music, if I were to speak to that musically, like there's so many layers to what music is doing. There's harmony and melody, melody and lyrics and percussion and historical context and kind of artistic genealogy and it's not really the listener's job to understand all of that but it's my job as a musician to allow them to enter that without any effort mm -hmm. and um so all of these pieces to me i mean i feel visual work in my body i have a reaction to it even when i don't understand exactly what is happening or what all the nuances of all these layers are. Um, and I'm also just, I have a textile problem. So anything that has threads and, and texture in it, I'm a hundred percent in. Um, so on a certain level, you know, I think this is what I like, but I also think it's the things that to me sing on, on levels that 
I don't understand, but I still feel um, resonating as a human being, even when I don't understand them. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that legitimate? Absolutely. No, it's wonderful. And I wanted to, I think that, that it, it is so interesting. I wanted to, to come to you next, just because it is a very different approach than, than Carly. And in some ways you're sort of coming at this almost like sort of the, the most blind of anyone else. Cause I know everyone else had a, an op opportunity at least be and I'm so work. sorry that I no, didn't. No, no. no and I'm not, I'm, there's no, um, that was not a part of the assignment that I'm glad that, that we have someone on the panel who experienced the work in this way, because I think it does lend a, a new perspective and one that, you know, many people um, encounter art in this way, um, you know, through Instagram and we, or, or other platforms where we were, were able to be introduced to work um, without having the opportunity to be with it in person. But it is interesting to see what pieces are able to still sort of reach us. And like you were, the way you were talking about music um, and the artist doing an effective job of allowing us in, whether as the viewer, you, you get the full picture or the story, whether you have access to that or not, um, can be inconsequential. I mean, of course, those things can enhance or, or change our experience of the work. But um, yeah, I, I love that you came at this with that perspective. And I think you um, you brought to the table, it's interesting to see some of the commonalities that came up in your selection uh, with with other, with other um, jurors and then, you know, the, the differences. But I know Omi is sculpture here that we see is one that, yeah. that I think was on, on most of, if not all of your um, selections. Um, and, um, you know, I was having a sort of parallel conversation recently about um, rereading. Mm -hmm. And I think it's applicable to deep listening or re-listening or looking and deep looking and re-looking. And, you know, I, I think, um, I, or at least I hope, how about I hope that, that I am drawn to things that you're going to be able to listen to or reread or relook at and find new nuances over time. It's not going to run out. The depth is there. The, the shortcoming is my understanding of it. And, and maybe you know, the time, understanding what the relationship with time and art and context and art is, you know, is really important. And, and that as a viewer, as an audience member, how can I do a better job nourishing that? But, but, but I, I do, I love pieces that give me this feeling that they're not going to run out, that I'm going to learn so much from visiting them over and over. Yeah. Which is one of the most rewarding um, and it's such a well articulated point, Tift. Just one of the most rewarding things about living with art is one of the reasons why it's so important is because it feeds us continually in ways we can't right. anticipate, even if it's an object or a thing we've seen every day you just can't anticipate that that level of of nourishment that it, it can provide um which I, I think is why it is so very important to to invest it and um make it a part of your life do other i know dustin that's something i'm going to scroll up here to the top unless tift or any of the other panelists wanted to comment on tift selections or no. i did want to say that yeah. I, I see that tift and i both chose the trilingual piece with the sheet music yeah, I love yeah. that piece I so love much. That the the musicians. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so I pass it. Yep, here it high is. Five. High five. Zoom high five. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. And there's I something love that also one too. very Jasper John. I mean, you know, I know so little, but I'm like, those numbers is Jasper John's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love great. that. And and collage and paper and all the writer things. Yes, I love yeah. that. Should I just buy that one after we get off? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you should. If I don't, you Absolutely. should do it. 
Do it so I don't. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'll arm wrestle you for it. <laughs> well, I was going to jump to Dustin, but I believe that piece is in your selections too, Marjorie. Is it not? Is Hello? that Dustin's piece? Hello? 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 Oh, no. Uh oh. Did Wait, Anna freeze? Anna. Hold on. Oh, no. Uh -oh. Am I back? You're yeah, there. We can hear you. There you go. All okay. right. <laughs> I, I was sort of floundering between, oh, no, it says my internet connection is unstable. Heaven help us. Spectrum has been giving me grief all week. Um, so I was going to segue into Dustin because of that point of the sort of importance of, of collecting and that sort of the long, the slow listening. But then at the same time, I feel like, Marjorie, don't you have that piece by Constance in yours? So we'll I do. That. And we'll come back to you, Dustin. I would, this is going to be a thread throughout. So let's go to, I'm going to um, sort of start scrolling through yours, Marjorie. And if maybe you want to sort of, touch on that piece a little bit because we know why the musicians chose it primarily. <laughs> I, I think it was the music, but also, um, you know, Constance is, um, by the way, I tried not to look at any names Good. when I first started doing the review or the prices, but I started to recognize work and I recognize that work. And she is, um, she's a wonderful artist that used to paint just these amazing vertical linear lines. But, you know, this one with the music, I too studied music. So I think there was this complexity um, of the work and also her progression as an artist when I realized, you know, it was her. Um, one of the ones that since we're scrolling um, that I'd like to talk about is to kind of contrast two of them. One would be Angela Lombardi's um, Silver point piece is, yes. you see that one? I think here it is. There's Angela. Well, and I was gonna just contrast two selections. Um, Angela's, that's a silver point process, which is a very fragile, um, you know, sensitive medium. It's, it's very challenging. And I love the way she left so much negative space in this work. But this is one, you know, silver point and charcoal that I was just, so impressed these are tiny little lines and if you mess up you know you can't erase them so it's a a very skilled process so that is one of my choices based on this technique and skill and then if you go to for example jp's work which i think was just a little bit further yeah. up yeah who i think but yes yeah this is so incredibly filled with um story and power and process. I mean, resin and fine art paper, he's using actual um, currency, dollar bills in there. It's about consumerism. You know, it's about our culture. You've got the guns. I mean, this is just, just like Tiff and all of you were saying that living with an artwork, there is so much to unpack in this amazing work. And you know, kind of luxury symbols that is so much a part of, of consumerism. So just, you know, this is one that I really wanted to point out because it has so many of the things that I was looking for all in one, but certainly others that were simple um, were also attractive to me. So that's why I ended up just not coming up with a theme and trying to pick out these, these, these artists that, you know, were doing such such a wonderful job at expressing themselves mm -hmm. yeah and i think i know we don't have a lot of time so i want to make sure i don't take up too much time so dustin has enough time to... yeah okay well let's let's move on i mean that's all really fantastic points i think it brings up for me the idea with collecting two with jps i'm glad you brought these up because on the screen something our our viewers can't really pick up on is the scale as well and so jp's pieces <laughs> very large. I think it's it's close to six feet tall uh, by about four feet wide. It was sort of the maximum size uh, that we, we were allowing into the, the show. And whereas Angela's isn't tiny, but a much smaller piece, something that I think a lot of people might, when they're collecting work, feel um, is more manageable or easy to, to easier to live with. Um, but I know, Dustin, in your intro, you sort of mentioned how 
in your house <laughs> you accommodated the, the plans to uh, to accommodate a really massive and large piece of art and so i'm sort of interested in hearing more about that and i'm sure marjorie you have large scale works that you live with i have a tiny 700 square foot house and i have some pretty massive things too so it, I don't know, just looking at that piece, um, in addition to all the awesome um, meaning that you unpacked for us, Marjorie, I think there are those sort of basic practical things that when we think about collecting art, um, we have to think about. And for people who maybe don't, aren't in the practice of collecting or living with art, um, see those as, as major obstacles, is that something what are your thoughts on that, Dustin? Because it seems like you've never let that stop I, you. <laughs> I, I, yeah, so that's my perspective is the consumer, right? So the art appreciator and the way that art speaks to me, I, maybe it's selfish. I, I, I'm i very much like, what is this saying to me? How does this make me feel? To the point that a lot of times I do want to, I'm intrigued to know about the artist. But before I want to learn about why they created the piece, I want to create my own perspective on it because I am more or less like, because I want, I want this in my life and I want to have that, that, that feeling first. Is that, is that crazy of me to say? A lot say? of times I want to, I want to go by, by feeling and, you know, for instance, you know, like this one, the who's money. And, and to me, actually, I loved it so much. I actually purchased that one. <laughs> Um, you know, we put so much value in, in money and, and what is money and seeing this such ornate piece because we put so much power into this, this currency for status and all these things, you know, and I was pleasantly surprised to create my own theory and, and, and feeling and then read why these artists created what they created. But a lot of the art that I pick evokes a lot of things that it's either I'm, I'm going through or that speaks to me like the, even the sculpture like the the wax one and I know that you had spoken on that like just seeing you know stuff that these these two foundations and and trying to figure out how to bridge something you know like I think that I I, I tap into art as a way for me to express vulnerability and and things that I have personally had to go through and so to be able to look at a piece and 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 feel something and have conversation about it. I think that's what's powerful. It's not just, you know, I, I, I'm so appreciative to the technical skill, but as a consumer and as someone who likes to collect things, it, it is slightly selfish. And then as I learn about the process, that's when I start falling in love with artists and connecting. And, um, and so, yeah, um, you know, even down to let's, let's go, there was the one that was the, the play on the Degas one, you know, it was called um, um, every, I mean, every. Do you know that every, one? Everyone yeah, wants to, that was Gab Quarters. Everyone yes. wants to play that. It's like for me, yeah. like I love, I love humor. You know, there so it is. I was already intrigued by this piece before I made the connection of the Degas, and then I'm like laughing because, like, you know, I, I was a hairdresser for 20 years. I know this person, like nothing makes this person happy. Look, you, you have like, you know, <laughs> you have a rabbit jumping out of a hat. You have every cocktail in the world. You know, so it's, everyone, I've been there. I'm that person. We can all be that person. And how funny to look back and, and laugh at ourselves. And, you know, and so, you know, it's it's about what speaks to me and the storytelling that, that I see. Um, and so even down to the praise one, uh, you know, I was really intrigued by that piece. It's beautifully done. Uh, it's a beautiful oil painting. And before I even realized that it was called Praise, you know, what I loved about that piece, it's, for me, emotionally, it's, it's someone either, you know, you can look at that and see joy, but you can also see fear. You know, is this person in rejoicing and praising? Is this person running away in fear? So it's these things that stir up emotion for me. And that's always been the connector for art for me and, and having that dialogue of, of what these, what evokes. And, and I love that discussion with other people to see their take on it. Um, how do you feel when you see this? What is this piece saying to you? So that's really kind of how I approached everything. It was, it was more on a personal level. Um, 
so yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's good. That was great. Thank you, Dustin. <laughs> that's great. Did you all find, um, is Anna back? I'm, I'm going to ask I a question am. if she's not. Please, okay. <laughs> but please ask a question. Okay. So I was going to ask, um, did you all find during this process, you know, I definitely never thought, you know, oh, I like all of these types of work. Um, but then I, as I started choosing the pieces, I found, oh, <laughs> I see that the female form is in quite a bit of these. <laughs> or, oh, I see that I really love, you know, mixed media work or, or um, you know, fiber, you know. So do you all go in knowing that? Or um, did you find that themes came up as you started selecting your pieces? I, you know, I, for me, oh, am I muted? Okay. Um, I, I, you know, I know I love the textiles and I have a textile problem, but I, you know, I find that we, we have so much that we are responsible for in our own silos and that's a problem. And there is a, just the uptake of specialized vocabulary that I might on a certain level understand in feeling but not have a grasp of in language that you know I mean when Marjorie says negative space and and resin and craft I go oh yeah that's right but that's not something that's going to come you know naturally out of my mouth so it's really um you know, how, how we give love and attention to things that we don't understand. I would love to know more about my own artistic visual vocabulary, but I honestly fall way short of what I would hope for. <laughs> I will just say, you know, even though I um, use those terms, I can tell you my own collecting, you know, I buy what I love. I buy what moves me. So I think there is, and that is, that's the message here tonight. You know, in this show, there is something for everyone at every price point. And I applaud you um, all at, at Artspace for, for giving artists this opportunity because yeah. it truly, it is enlightening and it's empowering and it's inclusive and people should buy what they love. Mm -hmm. And, and my, I, don't mean to, I don't mean to interrupt, but my takeaway as an audience member, which I think it's really important to be a mindful audience member, is that I want to do a more proactive job of saying, I love that. What are the words for the why? Mm -hmm. Right. But I, I just wanted to, I, that's really not, um, I'm just, that is wonderful that you have that ambition. And I want to know the why, how you can sing a song and just make me cry. <laughs> how can you write those songs? So, you know, I, I just think there's what the message here is that it's storytelling and art and, and it's empowering and it, it makes our lives better. And, you know, I just can't imagine life without art, all forms of it. Music, and there's, no, and there's no right answer. I feel like there's a there's a kind of a pressure um, as people try to step into the art world and community of picking something that's right. And it, that to me does not matter. Is it right for you? What does it say to you? How does it make you feel? It is so personal and you should be proud about that and not second guess that. If you have a knee jerk reaction and we have knee jerk reactions every day in our life, why would you then second guess something when you're looking at a piece of art? So if something moves you, if something makes you feel uncomfortable, but you still are so intrigued by it, if something is so special and so beautiful, that is what you should lead with. And sometimes the chatter makes you second guess. And sometimes the chatter can actually make you open your eyes. Like the piece about the, 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 the mothers that, you know, during the the nurse, the mother, like, I didn't know that story. And now, I, you know, I, I see that. So it's really about being sensitive to that, to the, to the consumer and allowing them to kind of, to feel for themselves and encourage that. Mm -hmm. 
I will say um, just a point about the education that's really needed most is just the more you see, the more you learn about what you love, right? right? So it's not about an, an academic perspective. It's really more about the more you go to museums, the more you go to art studios, the more you, you know, go to art space or any of those cooperatives, the more artists you meet, the more you learn. And, you know, maybe a good analogy would be wine. You know, if you, if you only had the wine that you first tasted in high school or college or whatever, and you never tried anything else. So it's just, it's, it's creating your own palette and defining your own love of art, not being dictated by, you know, someone from the outside. Yeah. Right. And being in conversation with lovely people. Okay. Absolutely. The artists. <laughs> <are all out>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's what was so special because there were so many different types of, of mediums in this show. They, you know, that was very unique to be able to see so many different types of, uh, uh, you know, materials used and, and perspectives. So getting a taste and, and a big dose of that was, was unique and, and was, is really special. I think, I know we are at time everyone, but I, just one quick thing, because I think something, this, this piece that we're, we've sort of um, alluded to and, and acknowledged even Marjorie in this last bit of the conversation, I think is the 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 idea of collecting art from contemporary even local artists so those artists that you do have the opportunity to talk to and develop relationships not not to sort of um discourage your own reaction to the work and um you know sort of muddy that but to en enrich it and exactly. you know, i think it goes into what you're talking about tiff too helping us to understand that why i'm so privileged to be able to work with artists every day and have conversations and um you know it only sort of en enhances my own personal experience of the work um in new ways that don't necessarily have to do with those conversations and the new information but just having access to that, those creative minds is, is so special. Um, it's a real opportunity that we all have to, to support contemporary local artists, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, are there any other um, closing, closing thoughts you all have before we sign off tonight? This has been wonderful. I wish we had two hours together. <laughs> It's we just we had quite a bit of work to go through, so we could have done two hours. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. This was like a speed, it felt like speed dating a little bit. Yeah, there, was, there was like so many pieces I actually wanted to talk about that it skipped right over, but yeah. Yeah. You know, the joys, the joys of art, the joys of the artists, the joys of the people that collect art. I mean, it's a community and we just want to invite everybody to be a part of that community through our space or anywhere they can, because it is a wonderful, wonderful community. Yeah. Thank you for allowing us to have fun with it. Yeah. That was, that was fun. <laughs> and so uh, as everyone saw this evening, there is a website that exists that you can access through the art space homepage. We will keep the selections um, of these incredible uh, curators up um, so that you can spend some time and look. I do want to acknowledge the fact that this full body of 250 plus pieces is coming down um, after this weekend. So this Sunday from 11 to four is your last opportunity to get down to art space and see the work in person. Um, or to really engage with all of the work on the website. If there is something that you're interested in adding to your collection, you can call us at ArtSpace, um, send us a DM on Instagram. We will help you out and, and walk you through that process. Um, but I, I can't thank our um, curators enough for being here with us this evening, each and every one of you. Um, 
did exactly what I had hoped, which was offered your your beautiful perspectives <laughs> and your expertise on um, to this this really fantastic body of work we we presented at Art Space. Um, also, check out all of our programming um, that we've got going on fresh while the the big show comes down after this weekend. We will be reinstalling Janelle Logan, who is our um, guest juror. She's the creative director at the McCall Center in Charlotte. Um, she has uh, come down to, to Raleigh and visited the works and made her own selections that will um, physically be installed in Gallery One starting next first Friday. Um, so I hope uh, everyone here in this room is able to, to come and, and see that. I think it'll be a real treat to, to sort of make a, another comparison of a, a curated selection. Um, Oh, Carly, am I forgetting anything at this point? I'd love to give each of you something we didn't do at the top and just really quickly and we'll sign off. You all have been so interesting. How can people who are um, listening in this evening follow you all? Um, can they? What's the best way to, to stay in touch? Dustin, I'll start with you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, through Instagram, I guess. So Dustin underscore Patrick underscore Smith. Awesome. All right. Marjorie, what's the best way for people to keep up to date with you? Well, um, the Art Suite Instagram is, you know, at Art Suite. And my personal Instagram is Marjorie.Hodges. And you'll occasionally get a picture of my daughter or son, but mostly I try to post about artists and the way artists are working, you know, in the, as activists as well. Wonderful. Tift, how about you? Um, I, I am Tift Merritt uh, on Instagram. Uh, I'm not, I'm sort of in a phase where I'm not totally forward facing and I'm enjoying that a lot, but I yeah. also, I'm here in Raleigh. You've probably seen me walking around with my kid. So. <laughs> Awesome. All right. And Carly Jones, how can folks follow, keep up with what's happening with you? Well, you can just come by art space. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so <laughs> come by art space. Anna and I are both there. Um, no, I'm on Facebook too. And also um, on Instagram, uh, Carly P. Jones Sing. Like, sing. Wow. Yeah, anyway. Mm -hmm, yeah. So Carly, that's my handle. Um, but yeah, you can just come by Art Space, come see the work in person. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we have, oh, good. Omi put it in here. The link for our curator selections, Omi just put in the, in the chat. We had a question about that, but yeah, definitely come through first Friday next week. We also have Janelle Logan with her talk on Thursday and the fresh sounds, I mean, uh, you get music, trophy beer, in an art gallery, art, music, spoken word. I mean, that's everything you would ever want, right? So we have <laughs> Charlie Lowry coming up. He's an incredible musician. Um, and then after that, Nito, a set of brothers that play wow. awesome, awesome music, like Neo Soul. And then I'm actually singing, um, and yeah. to close us out, <laughs> using my own art to raise funds for art space. So <laughs> please, please come uh, and enjoy our space and some music and hope to see you all there. Yay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank, you, thank you, everybody. I'm going to have to sign off, but thank you. We, we're very grateful for all, all of you. Thank you for thank being you part of the community. Okay. Good, night. Good night, everyone. Thank you.